gambling and cocaine. But this year, he helped Aston Villa to the FA Cup final. Are you looking forward to meeting Christine? Very much so, yeah. Got all that, I hope. <laughs> Paul, welcome. Nice Come in. Very Fine. nice to meet you. Nice Mind the cables. It's these cameramen. They're so oh. untidy. You'd like to sit on that side. Yep, Is no that problem. okay? Yep. And make yourself comfortable. I shall go here. And we can have a nice, cosy chat with this fantastic background. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you're used to it. No, I'm not used to sitting up here. I'm <laughs> glad. <laughs> That's true. Where would you rather be, up here or down there? Down there. Down there. Yeah. When I'm talking to you, I'd rather be <laughs> Thank <up here>. you. <laughs> Everything I read about you says you're playing better now than you have ever played. Is that yeah, that, I, I would go along with that. That's true. Playing better now at 32 than you were at whatever. Yeah, 18, 19, 20, yeah. You're supposed to be over the hill at 30, aren't you, as a footballer? Uh, I, wasn't, I was nearly over the hill at 25, so I've come back. And how many more years do you think you've got at the age of 32? I would say four. Four? Three or four. If I keep fit and I keep on doing the right things, if, if I go out tomorrow and drink, God forbid, you know, and then I'd say I wouldn't even have a year left. Why? What happened? Why did it first start to spiral downhill? I don't know, I just, um, all through drinking and gambling, really. I'd been an alcoholic for a long, long time without realising it, and, you know, every time I had one drink, I just couldn't stop from the age of 18. You know, I always had to be the last. I had to drink myself into an oblivion. And every is that time. part of football culture after a match or something, going out and having a, a bender? Yeah, it was at the time. It was uh, sort of, as soon as you finished the match, you went in the players' lounge and you had a drink but all the other players would go home and have, they'd have two and then they'd go home, but, you know, that wouldn't be the case for me. I'd get home probably Sunday. And, and didn't any of them say, come on, Paul, oh, take, and take you home when they saw you had a problem? Yeah, but I wouldn't listen to anybody. But does the money have something to do with it? I mean, suddenly, you know, a young kid, you're getting fantastic amounts of money. Is that one of the problems for players? No, because people say that, and I, I don't agree with that because at the end of the day, I, I use Ryan Giggs as an example. He's a, a brilliant footballer. He's one of the best around. He's young. He earns good money. Single lad. And he didn't do what I done. People say to me, what about when you played in cup finals and all that? I can't remember anything. I can't remember. All I was worried about was going out that night and getting drunk. You can't remember? Looking I can't back, remember. Can't like remember. When we won the FA Cup, you go up and you pick the trophy up and you pick your medal up off like one of the royal family or someone very, very important. And I couldn't tell you who it was. You have no memory at all no, of those great moments. No, no, not them. Like that's who's tragic. Yeah, but that's life, isn't it? That's that's the way it was. But what about Lorraine? Mm. Was she not worried about you not coming back on a Saturday night? Yeah, she was. I'd ring up and sort of start an argument on the phone to give me justification just to stay out. That's an extraordinary thing to do to blame it on her. Mm. Yeah, that's the way. You know, that's the way I was. It's a, it's a shame. I put her through a lot and. You know, it's probably one of the biggest regrets of my life, really. And then what? I mean, the drink came first. Well, the gambling and the drinking both come first, hand in hand. Gambling on, on what? Anything, uh, even indoor bowls. Yeah. You've got to do indoor bowls. So yeah. how, much, how much money were you gambling? Huge sums. Yeah, massive. It got, in the end, like, I was betting £10,000 a race on certain horses. What sort of odds? Oh, they'd have to be favourite. They couldn't be 100 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> I know footballers earn a lot of money, but I mean, crikey. It used to break my heart when I used to put like £10,000 on an horse, and then I'd sit down after and think, <laughs> my dad wouldn't earn that in a year. And that used to, that, that, that hurt me a lot. A lot of guilt there. Well, I remember moving into a house with Lorraine, and I'd just won the championship with Arsenal, and we bought a house, and we were sitting there on a set, no carpet, no food, and I had to get someone to pay the electricity bill. And I was like playing for England, and. And what were you earning at the time per week? Uh, it was probably about £4,000 a week. Still couldn't afford to pay my electricity bill or buy a loaf of bread. And did Lorraine know about the gambling? Yeah, but she loved me and that was, you know, love is uh, more than money. Really. Money doesn't even come didn't into Didn't she begrudge the amount of money you were really throwing away? Yeah, at the I'm time, because it was, all, it was all, a lot of it was secret, total. secret, you know, and, and then she'd find out and then I'd stop for a while and... You know, and then it becomes lying behind her back, and you know, and that's where it, that's where it hurt her really. Well, that's when you start to chip away at yeah, the relationship. Yeah, exactly. You're not the no, exactly. That's right. So you drink, and then where do the where do the drugs come in? I mean, you were you were snorting coke. Yeah, did you, did I, you do I, that to sober up, or? It was at the time. That's what I thought it was. I just thought it was to do with that, but no one told me what followed after that. You know, the paranoia, the fear. You know, frightened of everybody. You know, everybody looking at me. I thought they were after me, and every time I'd get in my car, 
I'd drive 10 yards, 50 yards down the road, and if someone was behind me, I'd pull over till they went past me because I thought they were going, they were after me. That was the drugs and you That about. was all the drugs. The paranoia just took my life over. Yeah. You know, I look back and how bad, messed up I was. But I, I wanted, I used to go train in the mornings and think if I just pull up and pull it over in front of this lorry, you know, it just might wipe me out. And that, that was how my head was telling, talking to me all the time, constantly, to finish it, kill so me. So how did you feel when the, when the Daily Mirror really broke the story and forced you out into the open? It was my choice, really. Uh, I think if it happened tomorrow morning again, I wouldn't do that. You know, it's something that you learn from. Because uh, you hadn't told Lorraine, had no, you? No, I didn't tell Lorraine until I was on the plane. We were going on the plane. We went. We had to be flown out to the south of France to get away from everything. And I told her I'd go on. You and her? Yeah, and I told her as soon as we took off that I was addicted to cocaine. On the plane? Yeah. That's how horrible I was. That's, the, uh, that's how sick I was. Were you in a public place? Oh, there was hardly anybody on the plane. But well, I should have told her. Yeah, I should have. You know, but that's, I don't know. It's, that's where my life was going at the time. I didn't know what I was doing. And football's, you know, it's a hugely macho, mm. masculine game. How did you feel when you broke down in tears at that press conference? Mm. Did it presume that just happened? It uh, yeah, I thought, I thought I was all right. You know, people said to me, you're all right to do this press conference, you're all right. And I, I thought I, I was honestly all right. Uh, the England and Arsenal footballer Paul Merson broke down in tears today as he told of his experiences in an addiction rehabilitation clinic. The hardest six weeks I've ever done. What did you have to do? Uh, the question had clearly prompted memories of a time in which brutal truths had been spoken about a life degenerated into chaos. He needed a good minute to recover. Uh, yeah, I'm not embarrassed to cry. You know, I still cry now. Absolutely nothing wrong nothing with him. There's something wrong with a man who is embarrassed to cry, in my view. I think the press then sort of looked and thought, you know, he's a man with troubles, it's not just a get up. And it wasn't, it was someone that had a major problem and I just it had to change my life around 100%. I went into treatment in 95 and I left Arsenal, I think, a year later, 96 or 97. Why, 97. why did you leave Arsenal? I, if I was going to AA meetings and I was doing the right things, I, w I wouldn't have gone. I'd go three oh, times yeah. a week. You still go three times oh, a week? Oh, yeah. If I, don't go for more, if I don't go, I'll be drinking again and I'll be dead within no time. And you've been how long without a drink now? It's just over a year now. I, st I went into treatment five years ago, but I drunk. I, I relapsed twice in that four years. And what caused that? Not going to meetings. Well, you really do. It's the power of those meetings is what yeah. holds I you. Yeah. I need to, you know, it's a way of normal living again. It's, you know, today I accept and I admit and I accept that I am an alcoholic. It's an, it is an illness and it's something that whatever I do, I'm compulsive. Does it run I in your family or? No, no, not, no. no. It's just something that stuck with me where whatever I do, if I open a packet of sweets, I have to eat the whole lot. That's the way I am. I'm addictive personality. Must have been incredibly difficult for Lorraine. Mm. And you made life hell for her. It was. It was, uh, it was one of the big regrets. The big regret for me now is that me, the, me, Lorraine, and the kids won't all grow up and be a happy family, which is, that's the biggest regret for me. The kids come to me for three days and with Lorraine for four days, and, and it does affect them. But, you know, I, I see it yesterday with the kids. I, I went down to my mum and dad's because it was Ben's birthday, and he was at my mum and dad's. And, Ben's uh, the middle one. Yeah. yeah. And when I left, you know, the kids wouldn't let me go. And it's, that's the thing that sticks mm. me more than anything. Mm. So yeah. you've maintained friendly relationships, so there's no problem about access and all that. Oh, really. no. No, we probably get on better now than what we've ever got on. Yeah. It's a shame, really, but that's the way it is. And do you still love her? Yeah, I always love her. Oh, yeah, definitely. And there's no there doubt any about chance that. you might get back together? No. Not even if you completely kick all your bad habits? I've changed. I haven't had a bad habit for a year. But Maybe. I hope she's happy because she, she's been through a lot. So I, I hope she finds happiness in whatever she does. You know, that's... And that would have been hard for me to say about a year ago. But you've come to terms with it now. You've come to terms y with it. Yeah. That there is no future for you as a family. I don't you like the word never, but I would, you know, today there isn't, no. no. Where do you go from here? You say you've been a hopeless husband, but you're a great father. Are the three kids going to become footballers? I don't know. Uh, it'll be nice. Would you recommend that they became footballers? Would you like them to? Oh, I would like them to. Uh, you know, my one, one big thing is that they go through and they get a great education, you know, and that's, that's the main thing for me. And if they go on and they play football, they do. And how does Charlie cope with... Um, well, most kids don't know what an alcoholic is. But he is getting to that age where he can read papers now. 
but I don't think I would like to be in the papers for the wrong reasons now. And do you feel you've had a fair press? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You deserve uh, see, with me, I got. think with the press, if, if I do the wrong things, they'll put me in the paper. And if I don't do the wrong things, I won't be in the paper. If, I know if I went out tomorrow and drunk, God forbid, that I'd be straight all over the papers again, and it would only be my fault. It wouldn't. It's very easy to say, oh, why don't you leave me alone, press? And, but I had one incident where, you know, I don't agree with it, is when I did drink last time, and I went back with a girl to her house, and we never slept with each other, and she would try to sell her story. And for me, that was like, I, I read the actual story and I see what, what uh, the actual stuff what was in it, which was a, was a pack of lies. And I sort of done a story with the paper just for no money or nothing, just to set my story straight. But <coughs> And then I heard that one of these PR men had got her to sell her story again. You know, And for me, that I wanted to kill myself. You know, that was it. I'd That's sort of give up because I just thought, you know, uh, there's people out there that are, you know, trying to kill, you know, wreck people's marriages and... You know, I'd done enough, I'd paid my price, you know, and especially now with the kids who are at that age where they can read the paper. And for me, when they opened the paper yeah. up and said, who's this, who are you with here, Daddy? If you want to meet some new girl, how do you know she's not this? When will I ever meet another girl? Well, it's a question of when you, if you're going to know that she's genuine or not. Exactly. That's the key thing, how would I it? ever know that? Yeah. Well, you won't. You just have to be careful. Exactly. No, that's, that's, that's a big fear of mine is, you know, will I ever meet anybody again? Now, who looks after you now? You haven't got a wife. Most mm -hmm. men are pretty l useless about it. I notice, I have to say, you haven't got any socks on. You've got, yep. You're showing a wonderful pair of ankles, but no socks. I mean, is that because you... No, my mum... Uh, I couldn't find my socks. Wash. I think I sent them all down to my mum to wash. And you I still send your washing to your mum? Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't do that. I don't know she if we use the washing when, machine. When you got married, that she'd got rid of all that. Yeah, I know. I mean, chaps do that until they get married, and then the wife takes over. I know. Can't you work a washing did, machine. But no, not properly. I can, can't get the whites and the colours. Get messed up. <laughs> Why you're dressed all in black? Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. And then it all goes <laughs> to the dry cleaners then. <laughs> so he's really uh, has quite a record, isn't he? Yeah, he's played How over seven hundred games, and he played with Pele. Didn't know that. I did not. I wouldn't have you thought know the who Pelé is, I do you? know who yeah. Pelé is, yes, the great Argentinian. Yes? No? They're <laughs> laughing at me. He's not Argentinian. What is he? <laughs> Brazilian. <laughs> oh, Brazilian, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were winding me up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I've got Argentina on the brain. Because of Beckham being, I can feel myself getting red. <laughs> well, that was embarrassing but less embarrassing than John Fashionu's lack of knowledge. I decided to investigate further this offside rule business with Paul and his nine-year-old son, Charlie. Now, the offside rule. Yep. Yep, come on. It's right a bit difficult, because we have to be goalposts. We're running towards that goal, yeah? We're running towards the goal. And Charlie, and you go now, you're on yeah. side, because you were level when I kicked the ball. Yes. But if you was in front of Charlie here when I kicked it to you, you'd be offside. So I have to keep behind Charlie. Always, yeah. As long as I keep behind Charlie, I'm yeah. all right. Well, I think there's anything that you want to say that you haven't said. <laughs> <laughs> Get this makeup off. No, I mean. He's embarrassed to have makeup on on the telly, but he looks lovely. Yeah. <laughs> haven't got as much on as I've got on. No. <laughs> You've been spared the lipstick and the eyeshadow. Yeah, I'll put that on when I get home. I promise you, nobody can do it. <laughs> Christine is back on Tuesday at 11. Next, though, a whole hour of comedy. I will die.